Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously, I was talking about Glyn Castle, County Limerick, and how what had been a classical house was, around 1820, given a sprinkling of battlements along the roofline, perhaps in the hope that it would make the building look older than was actually the case. Today, we're in the Midlands of Ireland and looking at an ancestral property that again started out as a regular house. Dating from 1737 or 1738, this is a view of a hunt passing across the grounds of what was then called Pakenham Hall, but is today known as Tully Nally. It was drawn by George Edward Pakenham, whose elder brother Thomas was then living in the property. Another drawing from 1770 gives us a clearer idea of what Pakenham Hall looked like in the 18th century, a rather plain, square, three-storey, five-bay house. Almost its only distinguishing feature was a pedimented door case approached by a short flight of steps. Now have a look at the same building today. This is the entrance front, looking west. Can you discover the original house beneath the castle? It really is there, with the same three storeys and five bays, only the latter are now flanked by towers. It's probably easier to make out the bones of the old Pakenham Hall by walking around to the southern front, where, once again, despite the corner towers and a line of battlements along the roof line, this is quite clearly a classical building. So what happened to cause this transformation and who was responsible for the work undertaken here? Thomas Pakenham, second Earl of Longford, was 18 when he inherited the estate in 1792 and the following year he set off on the obligatory Grand Tour. He also visited Scotland and there saw Inverary Castle, home of the Duke of Argyle, a classical house earlier given the appearance of a castle. Lord Longford decided he wanted one of those for himself, and so around 1800 he hired Ireland's preeminent architect, Francis Johnston, to give the family home a coating of medieval magic. This Johnston duly did by adding a Gothic porch in front of what had been a classical pedimented door case, plus a tower on each corner of the building, and then a light sprinkling of the aforementioned battlements along the roof line. Here's Johnston's vision of what the southern front would look like, and here is its actual appearance today, showing how very little has changed over the past two centuries. By this time, the Pakenhams seem to have become insatiable builders, because just a few decades later, the third Earl of Longford and his trustees decided to further enlarge the house. They commissioned Sir Richard Morrison to design two long extensions, running from the north side of the house to the old stable block, there providing accommodation for staff as well as other facilities, like this kitchen wing, the style of which is vaguely Tudor Beetham, with a hint of Holland thrown into the mix, thanks to the stepped gables. Elsewhere, more Gothic detailing took place, as can be seen in this window, providing views from one of the corner towers. But inside the house, the application of Gothic styling is altogether lighter. Here, for example, is the Great Hall, which nods towards the late medieval period, but only in the mildest of ways, and certainly not one that would meet with approval from Gothic revival purists. The Great Hall's ceiling displays the most tentative application of the perpendicular style, even though Francis Johnston in other places, like Dublin Castle's Chapel Royal or the saloon of Charleville Castle County Offaly, shows that he could be much more full-blooded in his use of this decoration. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the house, such as the library, there really is no attempt made to acknowledge any Gothic influence. Here, the classical spirit still reigns. There's nothing particularly unusual about this. And in the next episode, I'm going to look at another property in County Westmeath, where a very similar overhaul was undertaken of a classical house. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthetic. Goodbye.